Hi, my name is Nick, and today we will be painting a rusty metal texture. This video is a part of a series of material tutorials that I have created especially for you, so subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my tutorials. For the first step, I prepared an isometric cube. Using the lasso tool, I traced the edges of the cube and filled them with three different shades of grey. This will be our base. My idea is to design the cube using semi-rusty metal elements. The surface will be covered with aged metal sheets, with their edges bent and deformed, creating the impression of old, dented metal, as if it had been mechanically damaged or shaped by external forces. After outlining the dented corner of our metal object, I added deeper shadows by sampling the existing palette and selecting a darker grey tone. Never use pure black for shadows, it will flatten the surface. In our case, we aim to create a sense of volume and depth. I added a sense of thickness to the upper plane of the cube for sketching structural lines within the shadowed areas. I then outlined the base shapes for the bolts that appear to secure the metal sheets in place. On the lid surface I applied a slightly darker grey tone to begin establishing the foundation for the worn, rusty and dented metal texture. I made the left side panel using the same technique as the previous ones, applying a deeper reddish tone to emphasize the development of structural rust across the metal surface. Following the same approach, I began integrating rust details on the right side of the cube. Additionally, I outlined the bolt placement that secured the sheet metal panels. Feel free to use the tools in a way that suits your workflow. Personally, I created a dedicated layer for the cube itself. While all textures and shadows are applied on separate layers, which are organized as sublayers under the main cube layer. This approach allows for non-destructive editing. If something doesn't work, you can simply remove a sublayer without affecting the cube's structure. Regarding brushes, I am using a simple standard round Photoshop brush without any added texture. This choice is intentional especially for beginners. It's important to first master the fundamentals of form, light and shadow using smooth halftones. Jumping into textured brushes too early can compromise the integrity of your shapes and lead to a flattened appearance. Build your foundation first, the texture will come naturally with experience. Once I completed the base of the cube and established the lighting and shadow structure, I began laying the foundation for the rust texture. Using a separate layer, I applied scattered dots of rust with the spray paint texture brush, readily available for free online. This added the first layer of organic detail that will help simulate aged, corroded metal. Let me emphasize the advantage of working with separate layers. As you may know, texture brushes are generally designed to apply details on flat surfaces. 
However, you can always adjust a flat texture to follow perspective. Since the top face of our cube recedes in space, we need to adapt the texture accordingly. To do this, select the textured area on the top face using the lasso tool, then press Ctrl plus T to activate free transform. While holding the right mouse button and Ctrl, drag the corners to manually warp the texture into proper perspective, aligning it with the cube's surface. This simple technique helps maintain realism and dimensionality in your painting. After placing the bolts, four at the corners of each face of the cube, I refined the perceived thickness of the metal. Since each bolt is embedded into the surface, I needed to convey this depth through careful use of light and shadow. To achieve that, I subtly highlighted one edge of each bolt with a lighter gray tone. This created the illusion that the bolts are slightly recessed beneath the metal surface, enhancing the dimensionality and realism of the cube. I also created a separate layer to refine the form of the cube's upper plane. I slightly warped the shape to make it feel less uniform, introducing subtle dents to give it a more warm and natural appearance. Along the edge of the metal's thickness, I added a faint highlight, just a thin, lighter strip. This simple touch helped enhance the illusion of thickness and emphasized the dimensionality of the metal surface. I also refined the contours of our cube, paying special attention to the shadow zones where metal surfaces meet. I deepened these shadows to emphasize the sense of weight and contact between the panels within the planes themselves. I enhanced the appearance of dents using sharp geometric shadows to convey depth and structure. In key areas, I adjusted the shadows around corners and bands in the metal to better reflect their form. Overall, I am satisfied with how the piece is coming together. This brings our lesson to a close. We covered every step of creating a rusty metal cube, from constructing the form, lighting and shadows, to adding rust, dents, bolts and texture. You'll learn how working in separate layers and mastering basic light and form is far more important than relying too much on texture brushes. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and inspiring. Remember, in CG art, observation and consistent practice are key. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.